Okay, the next section is to start playing with the GI so that we're getting a, a nice clean solution that looks good. No splotches or artifacts around. So we'll just turn on anti-aliasing and leave out the default values. Back into here. Uncheck reuse because we want to recalculate the solution each time until we're happy with it. And we'll go to we'll go to the good preset. We'll just check everything as we go through. Minus four, minus one for the min and max rate, four hundred, four hundred for the samples. Pre filter I would drop to five and maybe drop the samples to 600. Now just render there. We'll come back to this in a second when it's done. Now we're on the AQMC pass after the light cache. So this section here is the light cache and you can see the sample placement for the adaptive QMC pass here. We could increase the sample placement by using proximity which would give us a lot more samples in corners and areas like that. A gradient to give us more samples where intensities and energies of the lighting vary. And also curvature to add more samples to curved surfaces or less there. And then we've got the interpolation over the samples to smooth out the information, gives you the nice clean render that we need for a lot of the architectural and design visualization. We don't need to go into a highly almost oversampled GI solution because there's a few little tricks we can use with Final Render to give us add in the detail and capture the detail without all these additional samples. So we'll just let this one finish. See how the lighting's coming in, hitting the seat here, and again streaming in from the exterior. I'll just let that render away and I'll join you in a second again. Here's our, here are our, here is our rendered image. Now it's all pretty smooth along here, quite happy with the GI there from the preset. What we'll do is we'll just reuse and lock the preset there for a second. Now going into the advanced controls, we've got the detail detection. Now that's been enabled as part of the preset with 20% screen space as the distance, which is having quite an impact on our render times, but does give us a nice quality here. But I'd like to add a little more definition into the corners we're getting on the ceiling and to the slat wall here. So what we'll do is we could drop the distance down 250 there and in shadow 500. We'll drop the blend down to 40, light shadow to 50 and in the diffuse calc checkbox that basically adds this almost AO pass, ambient occlusion pass, but calculated on the diffuse colour of the two surfaces. Which can give very nice results like this, but I'd just like to show you how I would set this up as normal. We'll render away again. And here, again, it's much faster, mainly because we've reduced these distances right, right down. And you can see it's picking out these areas much better in these corners. Again, it's giving us the problem that this is too dark here. Contact shadows are looking good on the floor around here and it will bring out details like the cushions on the seating and the slat wall panels, which we should, these actual 
insets in the slat wall panels which are modelled in. So I'll do a hit cancel there. Let's just try that with uh, light shadow blend of 75 and just see if that gives us a little more subtlety in the corners here. That should just reduce the amount Let's just reduce it slightly there. Let's cancel the render. And we could even tweak that. A blend of 30 just to knock it back even more. There. Much happier with that. Just picking out these corners is what we needed there. So again, we don't need to render the whole image. So we'll cancel there. Unlock the reuse and the lock checkboxes here, and we're pretty much done with the GI. So we'll just save that scene. There's GI complete. Now we've unlocked these because we're now going to go into the shaders. So I'll just close that then.